I was going that way a while ago and had a headwind. Now I'm going literally the other direction. I'm now heading dead west. I was going east. It's crazy how the winds can change around here. That is nuts. But anyway, I was doing a microphone test. In a headwind, I... Anyway. So, uh, I've, I've talked about my rabbit trails. I talked about uh, in uh, probably several videos, whether I post them all or not, I don't, I don't recall. But a high school friend of mine that uh, we were we were riding buddies for, for years. We went we went everywhere on motorcycles. Well, he would get himself into some of the craziest craziest situations. Ones that. At first, you're thinking, oh my god, he's dead. And then, immediately, you're, you're realizing he's he's not hurt. <laughs> it goes from, uh, from, like, oh shit, to absolutely hysterical. So, uh, I'll tell you about some of those. So, when we were, we were still in high school, and they were uh, redoing I-5 where it comes through uh, comes through Kelso, Washington. The thing snaked out. There was uh, new bridges being built, whatever. So we, I don't know why, we decided to go camp out under one of those bridges. The original I-5 was still going through like it like it was. I mean, all this the road and the bridges and everything were under construction. In fact, I don't think even the pavement was even laid down yet. The bridges still had the wooden uh, uh, forming stuff, you know, for the concrete and stuff in them. So we go out and camp out at the, under this bridge. Well, we wake up in the middle of the night, you know, we had a little campfire, you know, your little storytelling time, the, you know, the goofy shit you do when you're a kid. But anyway, we both crash out and we wake up and I think it's raining. If I remember right, it was raining. I just remember being really cold and it seemed like it was damp. It could have just been the fog. But uh, we decide, <laughs> there again, it's about one o'clock in the morning. We decide the hell with this. You know, he's gonna go home, I'm gonna go home. Well, we're way out by the Kelso Airport, you know, where this is at. And the only way out from this bridge was to ride this, this dike that comes out right by uh, the Tenet Way Bridge. That's like a main, like an expressway that goes into town into the Longview side. So uh, we're riding along the this dike. Well, right before you get to the exit, there's this huge metal swinging fence. You know, it's just a dirt road. And, uh, you know, sometimes that fence is closed. It's never locked, it's just closed. You know, the wind blows it or whatever. They're, whatever held it open didn't work very well. So we're bombing along half awake. And uh, I don't, like I say, I don't remember if it was fog or, or, you know, a little bit of rain, but, you know, it was enough that we had those old comp shields, old face helmets with the comp shields. It's just a clear shield that snapped onto the rivets on the on your helmet. And uh, I remember us having to wipe those things off because of the either the fog or the, or the rain. But anyway, we're bombing along. We come around this corner right before the last stretch to get off of this dike. Plain as day this bright silver, you know, like galvanized stuff that this big old fence is made out of. Clearly this fence is sitting there. Hey, that was a sportster. Um, clearly this fence is closed. Well, it swings in towards us. And, you know, as you're coming into the thing, it swings away from you. But anyway, we're coming along, and he's going, he's going, he's going. I'm like, oh dear God. I realized at the last second, he doesn't for whatever reason, he doesn't see our headlights are shining on this thing. Big old, you know, crisscross the old metal fence, you know, or gate. Bam! He just blew right into this thing. And all I see is just the bike kick up. You know, I see the under carriage of his motorcycle and him goes splat. His helmet goes flying off his head. Oh, he was half awake, didn't even strap his helmet down. And Bloom! Him and the bike just kind of pour to the ground. 
<laughs> this, this whole game, you know. It's just sitting there going, whoa, 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 whoa. You can hear this thing just making this, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> this, this whole gate just reverberating from hell, you know. I just absolutely just, you know, to a knee laugh. Yeah, that was just the funniest thing. He was he was fine. He gets up and he's like, he's got this look on his face like, wow, what happened? The goddamn gate was closed. I'm like, no shit. You can see it for an eighth of a mile, for God's sakes, you know? Yeah, he didn't think that was very funny. So another time, um, we decided to go riding out to Rainier. I was working, well, this is years ago, but I was, I've since left, come back. I was gone more than I was here, actually. But anyway, uh, uh, it was my first job at, at a Honda and Yamaha shop. Anyway, he uh, he needed something to ride. I want I had a, I forget what I was riding, a CB1100F or something like that. Or a 750 Interceptor. I, I don't even remember which bike I was riding. But anyway, he didn't have anything to ride. And uh, we had this used, I think it was an 82 or 83, somewhere in there. This Kawasaki Spectre. I think it was an 82. Do you guys remember the Spectre? It was kind of a cruiser, but it had a had fork boots or fork gaiters, as they, people refer to them as. Had fork gaiters. The forks were this kind of a this weird gold color. The rims were a weird gold color. They were all black. All the emblems and and uh, decals and everything were all gold. It was a black and gold motorcycle. Um, they were actually quite threatening looking. I mean, they were, it was like a cruiser with some serious attitude. And if you see them now, you just laugh at them and just go, my God, that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But uh, we had to use one, so um, I get permission. They let him ride that, so off we go. We go down, it was uh, like a Sunday because the store was closed. Went in, got got the bike, gassed her up, and boom, off we go. So we end up out by Mount Rainier and uh, there's a side road we, we drive by and this road goes up takes immediate uh, right runs along then takes immediate left well you can see this road from the highway just snaking up the side of this mountain just like you're looking at this road in front of me and I was just a stand it up and I'm like whoa look at that son of a bitch so we, we turn around go back and hit this road so we go flying up this road and uh, it was cool as hell. I mean, this thing was crazy steep. It gets up to the end and it's, you know, end of county road and it, it just turned to gravel and I go, ah, well, you know, I was into that. Well, there were several spots in this thing, you know, from the road, it looked like it just went straight up, but it actually kind of leveled out, came back up, leveled out. So coming down this thing was like, go, you know, like one of those high speed chases in San Francisco or something. You come flying, you hit that flat spot, and you go off, and you just, you know, you're airborne, but, I mean, you're just like, it's like the thing I did on, on this here a couple weeks ago when I went over that road. I mean, your, your wheel's essentially not making contact with the ground, but you're not going airborne like a motocrosser or nothing like that. You know, you're airborne, as in you have no traction with the road anymore. It was that kind of a thing. But it just gives you that weightless feeling that's just cool as hell, you know. And it's really weird when you do that on a big street bike. But uh, anyway, we're wow, flying over these things and we're coming down the last stretch where you can see that the road is taking the right before it takes the left and goes down to the highway again. Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm backing down and, you know, it's steep as shit, you know, so you're getting, you know, brake chatter and everything else going along and and I'm got my hand out and I'm like waving him to let him know slow the hell down, you know, because that old Spectre didn't have nowhere near the brakes that whatever I was riding, I don't recall what it was. But. So he, uh, you know, I'm watching back there and he was quite a ways back, so I figured he woed up too much, you know. Well, I'd already made the right and I'm looking in my mirrors, looking back. You know, what I see in my mirror is a road going like this and then, you know, the road behind me. Yeah, I could still see the angle of the road. Well, I'm watching, watching, like, geez, what's taking him so long? And all of a sudden, I see this specter through my mirrors just go, <laughs> go. <laughs> just crosses through my mirrors, you know? And I'm like, oh my God, there, there was no road. 
he just literally went off into the woods. And I'm like, holy shit, well, this blue cloud of smoke is rolling off. He's got, you know, the old rookie mistake, back wheel. I've never taken you guys straight down this thing, so we'll do this. This road actually ends up at the end of my dirt road where my property is. It's about a half a mile of woods to go through, but the road does connect. It's all gated off. But... <laughs> anyway, uh, it just, doof, he goes by, I'm like, that son of a bitch is dead. Because when I was looking down that hill, I, I'm seeing all these trees. But it almost seemed like there was like a field or something there. But there was a lot of trees. So I'm like, oh shit, there's no way he went off of that road at that speed. And survived, you know. There's no way he could have snuck through them trees, you know. So I'm like, oh shit. I, I'm just afraid of what I'm going to see. So I, I turn around and I'm like, oh, um. And I get back up. And I get up to the corner. And I look down. Well, there's a reason it looked like it was all green and like a field. It was literally somebody's yard that rolled down this hill and way at the bottom is this guy's house. Somehow or another, he went off that road and you can see where this guy, how he's keeping a lawn under these big old fir trees, I have no idea. But you could see the skid marks through this guy's manicured grass where he had literally weaved and waved his way through them trees. And down at the very bottom is this beautiful house. And a guy standing there with a rake in his hand. The specter's laying on the ground. And them two are sitting there having a conversation. And I'm like, what am I, what the hell am I seeing here? What the hell is going on? So I drive down there off to the side, not where he went, but off to the side was a little driveway that went down. So I go down and and by the time I make it, I mean, he went a long ways down through this guy's yard. By the time I make it down, he, uh, him and the old guy are, are trying to pick up that, that Kawasaki. See this, how they, uh, no trespassing, hunting or fishing violators will be prosecuted under penalty of law. But I was telling you in another video, I don't mean to, as Justin told me, my, my uh, rabbit trails. Um, I want to get too sidetracked, but this is this is where land is is closed off because of people going out here hurting themselves and then turn around and suing. And when they say violators will be prosecuted, there is no shit there. They will literally confiscate your, your motorcycle, or at least they threaten that. And I've heard they've done it, but I don't know if it's somebody just telling a bullshit story or what. But I've been out. Hey, there's a truck out there. Somebody got out there. I won't bother pointing it because I can barely see it. I know the camera will. But anyway, we get down there, and this old guy, he's the one laughing. He goes, oh, damn, he goes. He, he was an old uh, motorcycle rider himself. He goes, I ain't never seen anybody maneuver a motorcycle like that young man did. He goes, he's coming through and he's going, ah, oh, that one's got him, I oh, cleared it. Oh, he, this old guy was so funny. He had us in hysterics explaining my friend guiding that damn 750 through them freaking trees. And you can see where that thing had cut through. He, I don't think he ever let go of that rear brake. That had to be something to see. Had to be crazy. So, that's a, uh, this is my friend that, uh, that we both, <laughs> a random uh, logging boot on the side of the road. So, uh, anyway, this is all the same guy. I mean, the crazy stuff we got into. Um, one of the, one of the best ones he did, let's see where my time was. I'm 14 minutes, I don't have enough time for that one. Um, oh, we'll do a quick one. Um, some hunter that I never ride on the back of a motorcycle. Even from a kid, never, ever do I get on the back of a motorcycle. I don't remember what the deal was, but somehow or another, my friend talked me into riding on the back of that 82XL 500R that he had that was like mine, the one he took me out while we were doing wheelies that time at the port docks. Talks me on to getting on the back of this thing. 
I mean, I have no idea what moment of insanity went through my head. I don't even remember why. We were right, we were just down the street from his parents' house. So he turns around and we're heading back towards his parents' house and boom, up he comes up on a wheelie. Well, you know, I'm not a good backseat driver anyway. So I'm like freaking out, put it down, put it down. I'm like, you know, jousting him, you know, put that effing thing down, you know. And uh, if you, none of you guys have ever done this, I know it's always our girlfriends and stuff to do it, but you need to have some serious respect for your girlfriend holding on to the back of your damn motorcycle while you're doing a wheelie. Because that is the most horrifying feeling you'll ever feel. That is not cool. So uh, anyway, I mean, I feel like my butt's about to drag the ground. So we're going along and, and the road takes a, a 90 degree turn and then it kind of goes uphill and past his parents' house. And we're coming to this turn, and I'm like, put it down, put it down, you're not going to make the turn. Well, I don't know what the hell possessed this son of a bitch, but he thought he was going to make this turn, but we're going like 40 miles an hour. You know, he's like, bop, 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 going along. And, you know, we're kind of going down a hill, and then, doom, the road <laughs> takes, I mean, a 90-degree left-hand turn. Well, he's like angling on like he's going to try to do this turn. Well, as soon as he starts in the turn with both of us on there, you know, old dual sport tire, the tire rolled on the rim. And when it rolled on the rim, it just kicked the ass in sideways and bam, on the deck we hit. Where's the little sidewall and about a 10 foot drop. There again, believe it or not, is a guy standing there with a rake in his hand. Of course, this yard is only, uh, you know, maybe a hundred feet deep or whatever. And most of our scrubbing and, and sliding and coming to a stop was on the road, but it was like a like a four or five inch curb thing that was against this guy's uh, yard. Boom! We hit that. We flip. The bike flips, and we the bike and both of us go flipping down into this guy's yard off this nice rolled hill. It was, it was about ten feet high. And uh, that guy, and this guy was not friendly at all. He freaked the hell out. Because where we kind of banged along and where the motorcycle banged along, it like divvied it up, up his grass. He freaked the hell out. We had to go back, you know, we, once we scraped up our wounds and whatnot, we had to go back there and it looked like an old polo thing. We're out there flipping the, the divots over. But uh, anyway, I got another, another story about him, a really good one. Um, I'm out of time and I'm couple miles or so from my house. I've ran this one long. Oh, dear God. I said I was just going to tell you one more quick story. But, um, anyway, I've got a real good one. Maybe that was one my wife was saying I should tell. But anyway, uh, I've done probably six or seven vlogs here in about two hours. So, 